Buckle up because Fedora 39 has just hit the scene and it's an absolute game changer, boasting a quintillion of new features that are bound to blow your mind. At its core, it's powered by an all-new Linux kernel and on the front lines, it's rocking GNOME 45. But that is just the tip of the iceberg. Watch till the end to know what makes Fedora 39 one of the hottest distros released in this year. Alright, let us kick things off by talking about one of the most exciting aspects of Linux Kernel 6.5, the remarkable performance boost it brings to the table. In the world of computing, performance is the key. It's what determines how fast your system can run tasks, how efficiently it utilizes your hardware, and ultimately how responsive it feels. With Linux Kernel 6.5, you can expect a significant upgrade in performance, especially if you're using Intel CPUs that combine performance and efficiency cores. And it's quite relevant from the Geekbench cores that Fedora 39 can squeeze out from the same hardware. But that is not all. The kernel has also introduced innovative tools to bring CPUs into operation in parallel. This is a substantial boost for the boot times, especially on systems that use multiple processes. In fact, according to LWN, this improvement can reduce boot times by as much as a factor of 10. Now it's important to note that this enhancement is primarily aimed at servers so don't expect significant improve in your regular PCs or laptops. However, here's the fascinating part. 96.3% of the world's top million servers run on Linux. In fact, Linux powers around 90% of all cloud structures and practically all the best cloud hosts use it. So while this change may not directly impact your personal life, it directly leads to you as a consumer having a faster and better quality of life. We are also greeted by the initial appearance of USB 4.2. Now, why should you be excited about USB 4.2? Well, USB 4.2 can transfer data at speeds up to a mind-boggling 80 gigabits per second bidirectionally. That's a staggering 8 times faster than USB 3.1 Gen 2 and a whopping 16 times faster than Gen 1. And the best part? All of this incredible speed is backed into a single versatile connector. But there's a catch, full support is still on the horizon, nevertheless it's great news because as the kernel continues to embrace it, you can expect your computing experience to get even better. Now for those of you who crave faster and more reliable wireless connectivity, Wi-Fi 7 has received some extra kernel love in Linux kernel 6.5. It delivers speeds up to a mind-blowing 40 gigabits per second and that's nearly 10 times the theoretical speeds of Wi-Fi 5 and approximately 40 times the improvement over the trusty old Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz band. Now let's delve into the next thrilling evolution within Fedora 39, the introduction of GNOME 45. And I assure you, it only gets more exciting from here. This iteration of GNOME is entirely geared towards elevating performance and boosting productivity. For instance, the ingenious Super Plus S key combination now opens the shell quick settings, offering swift access to essential controls. Speaking of the shell, GNOME 45 brings a welcome addition in the form of keyboard backlight settings. Now you can effortlessly adjust your keyboard backlight right from the shell itself, streamlining your customization experience. The desktop environment received a subtle yet meaningful update. The activities icon transforms into a sleek, pill-shaped switcher enhancing its utility. This change allows you to seamlessly switch among various workspaces with a simple scroll. It's worth noting that the app menu and app name display has been phased out in this iteration, a feature rarely used by most users. Before we venture deeper into GNOME 45, it's crucial to highlight the core level changes that this version has introduced. GNOME 45 ushers in significant core level enhancements within Mutter, the window manager that powers the GNOME environment. These changes collectively contribute to an exceptionally smooth desktop experience, one that I can confidently say is the smoothest I have ever had the pleasure of using. This focus on core improvements sets GNOME 45 apart making it a game changer in the realm of desktop environments. In the official file manager, Nautilus users can expect a series of subtle yet impactful improvements that significantly enhance the overall user experience. Notably, the sidebar has been refined making it more distinct and user-friendly. This enhanced visual clarity simplifies navigation ensuring users can swiftly access their files and directories. Moreover, there is a noticeable performance boost rendering Nautilus even more robust and efficient, allowing for seamless file management. The evolution continues in the realm of system settings. The privacy menu has undergone a thoughtful revamp, seamlessly integrating with the other pages inside the settings app. This streamlining ensures a consistent and 
cohesive user experience throughout the settings interface. Furthermore, the sharing page has received noteworthy updates. Users will now find individual switches for different sharing options, affording them finer controls over their sharing preferences. This granularity empowers users to tailor their sharing settings precisely to their needs. The About page has also undergone refinement, resulting in a cleaner and more organized presentation. Much of the technical information has been thoughtfully migrated to the details page where the users can conveniently access a neatly arranged summary of the system's technical specification. A particularly useful addition is the inclusion of a copy button, simplifying the process of copying the technical details for reference or sharing. For newcomers to the system, informative pop-ups has been strategically integrated into various places. These pop-ups serve as a helping guide, offering explanations and insights into different system features and actions. As an example, you can see one such pop-up here, providing clarity on the process of logging in without a password. These thoughtful enhancements collectively contribute to an improved and more user-friendly Fedora 39 experience catering to both seasoned users and newcomers alike. One of the noticeable highlights in Fedora 39 are the introduction of new applications. To kick things off, there's a brand new Loop Image Viewer, a worthy successor to the eye of GNOME. Loop Image Viewer is designed to provide users with a modern and highly user-friendly image viewing experience that aligns perfectly with the GNOME desktop environments, aesthetics and functionality. When you explore Loop Image Viewer, you will immediately notice the familiar and essential features you would expect from a top-notch image viewer. These include effortless navigation through a collection of images as well as zooming in and out but uh, these are all the basic features. What truly sets Loop Image Viewer apart are its GNOME specific features. For instance, it offers a convenient copy button right on the header bar. This means you can effortlessly copy images from the viewer and with a simple paste, these images can be seamlessly incorporated in your Nautilus file manager or any other compatible application. This integration enhances your workflow, making it more efficient and user-friendly. With Loop, you not only enjoy a delightful image viewing experience but also the convenience of seamless integration within the GNOME environment. There are other software additions like the new camera app Snapshot which replaces Cheese but however I find both the applications inside my system. I don't know if I installed the new camera app because I wanted to review it during the GNOME 45 video but anyway it's just here. But the fact is it could not detect my camera, I mean the new app. However, Cheese, which is the older version, does it. This situation highlights the complexity of software compatibility and the importance of continuous development and updates. As GNOME continues to evolve and refine its software offerings, it's possible that future updates or fixes will address the compatibility concerns I've encountered with the Snapshot app. In the meantime, you can use alternative apps like the older version of the camera which is the Cheese application so that you can make the most of your hardware without any disruption. And that's the beauty of Linux, right? You have a ton of free application to do anything. Although OBS is available for other platforms too. GNOME software now promotes responsible handling of flatback packages, ensuring storage efficiency. You get two options while removing flatback software to keep the associated files or remove them. These are just the glimpse of the exciting changes in GNOME 45. For a comprehensive look with stellar animations and visuals referred to this video, access it by clicking the i button or from the description below. And to put to the finishing touch on Fedora 39, let us not overlook the subtle yet welcome color enhancement on the bash prompt. While it may not be a groundbreaking feature, these cosmetic changes give the command line interface a visually appealing and modern appearance. It's a testament to the meticulous attention to detail that Fedora consistently applies, ensuring that even the smallest aspects of the user experience receive careful consideration. After all, it's often the little things that add up to make a big difference in your day-to-day -day interaction with your operating system. However, amidst the impressive array of updates and enhancements, a selected few changes didn't quite make the cut for this release. The development team's meticulous scrutiny led them to conclude that these particular features weren't quite ripe for the prime time. Notably, a fresh iteration of the DNF package manager was slated for release in tandem with the highly anticipated arrival of the all-new Anaconda installer. These components represent 
the cutting edge of software management and system installation, yet the developers opted for a measured approach, choosing to ensure they reach the highest levels of stability and functionality before introducing them to the Fedora ecosystem. This is precisely why my admiration for Fedora runs deep. Their commitment to delivering the latest and greatest innovations while unwaveringly prioritizing system stability is truly commendable. It's a delicate balancing act that few operating systems manage to execute so effectively. With Fedora, you not only get the cutting edge of technology, but you can also trust that every update and enhancement has undergone rigorous testing to ensure a rock-solid and reliable computing experience. It's the dedication to both innovation and stability that sets Fedora apart in the world of operating systems. Rest assured, these improvements are in the pipeline and will be introduced to Fedora users when they meet the exacting standards of the development team. You also get the updated variants of the already existing applications like the LibreOffice and more. Now, on a final note, you might think that this Fedora release does not bring a lot to the table and it's actually kind of true. But at the same time, I feel like Fedora is really pushing itself too much already since they are trying the latest releases and trying to make them stable. I have Fedora installed on my desktop and it works flawlessly, it is very smooth and efficient. So it is a really nice to have release. Next, we also have the new variant of the Fedora Immutable release, the all-new Fedora Onyx. This is very similar to the Fedora Silverline, but it's kind of like an immutable spin of the budget desktop. So, that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.